Hi, welcome back to my art tutorial series where I am taking you through how to draw various parts of the human anatomy. Today, I will explain about drawing the shoulder, chest, and back muscles. The shoulders are the part of the human body that allows our arms to move as freely as they can. With a ball-like socket, our shoulders let our arms be able to rotate and pivot forwards, backwards, sideways, upwards, and downwards. The shoulders are connected to the muscles in the arm, as well as the chest muscles on the front of the body and the muscles on our backs. Understanding how each of these aspects work on the human body will greatly improve how you draw and allow you to level up in your art journey. The shoulder muscles. The shoulder muscles surround the top of the arm where it connects to the body's trunk. The deltoid muscle is the main muscle of the shoulder. It consists of three parts, also called heads. The anterior deltoid, the lateral deltoid, and the posterior deltoid. Tendons connect the shoulder muscles to bones, and these bones include the scapula, shoulder blade, the humerus, bone between your shoulder and elbow, and the clavicle, or collarbone. The chest muscles. The pectoralis muscle, or the chest muscle, is any of the muscles that connect the front walls of the chest with the bones of the upper arm and shoulder. There are two such muscles on each side of the sternum, or the breastbone in the human body. The pectoral region is the anterior region of the upper chest where there are four pectoral muscles, and they are the pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, subclavius, and serratus anterior. Although, for the sake of easy drawing, it would be easier to just divide the chest muscles into the upper chest middle chest, and lower chest. The back muscles. The anatomy of your back muscles can be complex. There are several different layers of muscles in your back that are often pulling in different and various directions. The key back muscles that can be seen most clearly include the trapezius. These muscles near your shoulder blade help you stand straight and throw. There is also the latissimus dorsi lower on your back that helps with arm movement and breathing. And there are also rhomboids. Adjacent to the trapezius, these muscles support your shoulders and help you pull. When drawing muscles, it is highly efficient to use reference photos as study material, as it will help you understand the forms better. I suggest taking references of bodybuilders, as their hyper-defined well-shaped muscles allow an easy grasp of how these muscles look in various poses. Simplifying the muscles into basic shapes is also a useful way to better understand the muscle structure. Instead of hyper-detailing every muscle fiber, the muscles are simplified into basic forms, making drawing muscles straightforward and easy, while also being very handy in improving your art. After you have a good understanding of the anatomy of the shoulders, the chest, and the back, you can also try drawing from imagination. By imagining the shoulder and its relation to the chest and the back, it could be interesting to try draw various positions and poses from the top of your head. It should be noted that drawing from imagination works best when you have a clear mental library filled with a lot of experience of drawing from reference. So even when trying to draw from imagination, don't be afraid to use references. The chest and back muscles are the most prominent on the torso, aside from the abs, which we will cover in the future. The reason I put the shoulders, chest and back muscles all together is because each muscle is connected to the other and can be grouped together. Every time the shoulder moves, the muscles in the chest and back will also be affected. The shoulder is also the pivot point of the entire arm, so understanding how the shoulder works together with the chest and back can help inform better poses and more realistic drawing in the future. I hope that this was helpful in any way, shape or form. By learning about each part of the human anatomy and understanding the way different parts of the body affect other parts, you can have an even clearer insight in how the human body is drawn. By practicing every day, using both reference and imagination, improvement will naturally come. A short YouTube tutorial can only help you so much. The rest is up to you. Thanks for watching. 
If you like these tutorial videos, be sure to subscribe and like the video. Next time, we'll be drawing arms.